Hi everybody, Beanmeister22 here. Hey, today we are going to remove and clean the brush from our Hoover Power Dash carpet cleaner. This is a small, lightweight carpet shampooer. Now I've had larger ones. I've had a full-size Hoover carpet shampooer. And several years ago I had, I say several years ago I had because I don't have it anymore. I had one of those big square ones like you rent in the supermarkets, those HR carpet cleaners. I had purchased one of those and it was a homeowner's version. So it's the same as the rental where the rentals are red or orange, the homeowner's version is blue. And when you have a real carpet shampooer like that, everybody and their brother wants to borrow it from you and you rarely get it back without asking and then eventually you just don't get it back. So I wanted a small, lightweight, easy to use shampooer, so I picked this Power Dash. I bought it on Amazon for around $100. You'll see them for $130. You'll see them for a little bit less. This is the Pets version. I don't know what the difference is. There are different versions. Maybe we can look it up and I can post it at the end of the video. Since I have been bit before buying things on Amazon, I looked through the reviews and people said, oh, we love these shampooers, but they are hell to clean. They are unreasonably difficult to clean. In fact, they will only work if you keep them really clean, and it's impossible to keep clean. So they only work good the first few times. Well, that's very disappointing. So I used it. I pre-vacuumed the carpet with my Dyson, and then I pre-treated a couple spots, and then I shampooed. Being that this is a small shampooer for small areas or spots, you know, you've got to fill the tank a few times. Other than that, like, I'm really happy with it. I'm really impressed with what came out of the carpet. Now here's the problem. Even though I have an Auric vacuum cleaner, which I use, and then I went over it with, like I said, the Dyson, which is, you know, super sucker, I still ended up finding a bit of cat litter sand, you know, cat litter granules, the clay granules, and that will mess up a carpet cleaner like nobody's business, and that's what we're cleaning out now. So what we have here is a combination of dried cat litter, because I let it dry, and, which probably was a mistake, and some cat hair in there. And all those aren't cobwebs or spider webs, it's probably cat hairs in between the uh, dried up cat litter. So you need to take the bottom off underneath the brush in order to remove the brush. Now, the first thing I'm finding out here is these screws are very low quality and they are stripping a little bit. Yes, I have the right size screwdriver, but this is like low quality Chinese tin when it comes to these screws. You remove the screws, the ones on the front are longer, the ones on the back side are shorter, pull it off. Alright, then you down to where the brush is. You can see the belt, now you have to pull the brush out and then pop it off the belt. No problem, right? Then you can take the brush and rinse it off. The brush here is pretty clean, so I guess my brush didn't really need to be cleaned as much as the inside of that housing. Well, I have it apart and we just clean the inside of the housing. Laugh if you will, but I'm using a plastic knife here to scrape this stuff out because I don't want to do any damage to the plastic housing or anything here on the vacuum. And I guess if I had a good sturdy toothbrush, I could use that. But we've already started, so we're not going to go grab somebody else's toothbrush and do this, right? All right. We're done cleaning it. Vacuum it out with a Dyson. and then we can wipe it down with a wet rag. Now this is clean enough. Now when you're putting the brush in, you have to loop it over the belt, slide the belt part partially in, pop in the other part, and there you are. Now you need to put the bottom plate back on. Something I am noticing right now as I'm putting the screws in, 
these screws, and I kind of noticed it when I took them out, they just dig right into the plastic. So you're not going to want to do this procedure many times where you are not just going to strip the screws, but you're going to strip that plastic that they dig into. Very piss poor design. They actually should go into a little metal threaded thing, but they don't. And you're going to have problems if you do this very often. All right, so you tighten everything up. We need to put the nozzle back on. Now I removed this and it says rinse it out. So I rinsed it out and then I need to take some of these long wooden Q-tips and kind of clean in there, make sure it was clean, rinse it out, dry it off, and now we're gonna put it back on. It simply catches on the bottom and slides in. Piece of cake. Now we are ready to go. Maybe we should shampoo something and dirty it up again. Well, it's precisely what we're going to do, but not in this video. All right, so if you were afraid that getting inside and cleaning the brush was difficult, no, it's not very difficult. It's important. And, you know, I almost want to. You can't. But you want to take this out and spray it down with a garden hose right after you use it. You know, that would solve this problem. You can't because you'll get the motor wet and then, you know, you'll get electrocuted and probably die. The cleaning of this, it, yeah, it's it's kind of piss poor how it's designed, but it works really, really good. So if you're only using this occasionally, a couple times a year, it's lightweight and it's it's perfect because of its size and that it's lightweight. My full-sized Hoover shampoo was just too big because it was maybe one and a half times the size of a standard vacuum cleaner. And then that big square HR cleaner I had, that was just way too much. I mean, that's what you do when you're shampooing once a year the entire carpets or something. This is just, we're doing a section, we're doing the hallway, we're doing by the cat boxes, we're doing by the front door. We're doing where your brother-in-law threw up on New Year's Eve. So this is really good for those type of things. All right, so uh, if I get a chance, maybe I'll make a real video on this or not, but I just want to do a video on how to change and clean the brush. If the brush was bad, you could replace it. If we were going to replace the belt, you're already in there from where we were, and you can replace the belt on this also. But let's hope I never have to make a belt replacement video because the thing's brand stinking new. Yeah, all right. So I'll leave your comments in the comment section. As always, thanks for watching. Beanmeister 22, the most dangerous man on YouTube.